How do flocks of birds fly in unison, forming fluid shapes? How do schools of fish navigate around obstacles in harmony, never bumping into each other? How can information be transmitted so rapidly between individuals in the group? Pelpsy, mind reading crystals. Not quite, but the answer is way cooler and it is closely connected to the mechanisms of our brain in a working. Don't matter, girl. Welcome back to the What is Consciousness series. Today, let's find out what the criticality hypothesis is and if it can help explain our brain. While the collective movement of fish or birds seem complex, each individual animal is actually just following a simple set of rules. Stay close to the neighbors on your sides and close, but not too close to the neighbors in front and behind you. Keep moving. It's like a rush out traffic, just a little bit more graceful. Individual fish or birds are only focused on these small local interactions, but when enough of them come together, stunning, elegant patterns emerge. In science, emergence is the idea that complex behavior spontaneously arise from many simple elements working together. Imagine a tight string with chaos, randomness on one side and perfect order and organization on the other side. You grip the string and you pull it both ways. As you pull, tension builds up until BOOM! String rips. Energy releases. A spontaneous event occurs. Emergence or the spontaneous creation of sophisticated behavior is believed to be a function of evolution. This behavior of emergence can be observed in many aspects of nature and society, from the formation of the universe to the viruses spreading in population, tectonic plates, global weather pattern, wind gusts, Flocks of birds, network of brain cells, the beginning of armed conflicts, and even crumpled paper. Well, someone wrote a paper about crumpled paper. Two papers, actually. Criticality is the state of the system that is stretched on the verge of order and randomness. Think laminal flow versus turbulent, fast-flowing fluid. What is wild is that these systems often naturally evolve into fractal or self-similar structures. Branching off trees or veins might represent some efficient way of transporting fluids. Look at the shape of coastline, snowflakes, mountain ranges, and even entire galaxies. Nature clearly seem to prefer some efficient self-similar forms. Hmm? Yeah, maybe put it even more conceptual. For now, let's approach this concept by building a simple model. In 1987, theoretical physicist Furbach had an idea. He thought that many things in nature self-organized around a critical point. To illustrate that, he used a pile of sand. If you keep adding sand on top, eventually the pile becomes unstable. And any single grain of sand added to the top can trigger avalanches cascading down the sides. That is a critical point moment. Gravitational energy releases and the sand pile reorganizes into a more stable structure. Then if you keep adding sand, the energy builds up and the scenario repeats again and again and again and again. When system undergoes a phase transition, such as when pile of sand reorganizes or water transition from liquid to vapor, or a honey forms a drop from a spoon, it moves through the critical point, a moment of collective behavior of self-reorganization. Another interesting fact, in computer science, there's something called cellular atom matter, or you might know it as a convoy's game of life, and it also exists on this balance of chaos 
and organization, where as you change initial parameters just a little bit, you either arrive to a very organized uh, squares or a very chaotic system. I'll leave more links to this diggy diggy internet wormhole if you want to find out more. In physics, classical example of phase transition is a magnet. If you heat up magnet to a certain temperature, it loses its magnetic properties. And on the opposite, if you cool down iron to a specific temperature, it gains magnetic properties. I'll leave a link for the video that explains this in more details and exactly how it happened. You know what? I'm gonna remove cellular outer matter. Anyone cares for cellular outer matter? It's a consciousness video. Why are we talking about magnets? Magnets are cool. Cool, cool, cool. So what does it all have to do with our brain? Well, scientists noticed that systems operating near the critical point seem to be especially good at processing information. That might give them evolutionary advantage driving biological system survival. The brain criticality hypothesis became a hot topic in the beginning of 21st century. In 2003, the physicist and the neuroscientist conducted an experiment. They isolated gray matter neuronal cells and placed them in the observed controlled environment. Over time, the cells started to form groups and the neuronal connection between them resembled the Sandpile model now called neuronal avalanches. That suggests that our brain operates somewhere near the critical point too, or what's called quasi-criticality. And it makes sense because operating right at the edge of chaos is risky. Any small change can lead to a massive cascading effect like during epilepsy or some mental disorders when any tiny thought or input can lead to a massive mental breakdown. On the other hand, we don't want a system to completely not react to a change in the environment like what's seen during a comatose state. The brain must be balanced with a slight preference for stability. But it looks like, as always in science, the answer involves a healthy dose of it's complicated. And maybe criticality is just one piece of a puzzle. It seemed to be able to explain well neuronal flexibility, neuronal organization, information storage and processing. I didn't find anything that could explain the reasons for states of consciousness to exist, the reasons for different brain areas like thalamus to exist, and um, my favorite qualia. To me, criticality seems like something more than just some scientific baloney. It's a humanity's attempt to understand the world that is right outside your and my window, to find principles that govern our universe. As we unravel the mysteries of criticality, we may or may not understand the universe better, but the idea is to enjoy the scenery along the way, to appreciate the Magnificent complexities of our universe that somehow found its way within us, too. Let me know if self-organized criticality and critical brain hypothesis sounds convincing to you. Or do you think it's just another scientific nonsense? No. Nah. What part of the scripture do you think? <laughs> That's the made-up part. Days and days and days researching, looking it up. Uh, would be nice to have a stunning, elegant pizza. Don't matter, girl.